I'm just at Garrison. Okay. And do you remember the first time you saw Gravel Lake? I'll tell you, the first time I heard about it was before the first time I saw it. And my daughter was in junior high school here with a friend of hers whose parents had a cottage on um, the, ch not the channel, the tra in the trailer park. And Mary went out there and visited with Jean, it was the Donatters. And that's the first time I heard about it. And then I didn't see it again until, oh, several years later, uh, we had made a down payment, my husband and I, on a lot on Minor Lake. And it was up on a bank. It was a beautiful view, but my husband worried about it because he said, when we get old, we aren't going to be able to get up there. Hmm. And he was right. So we started looking around for some more things. And I, at that time, had just become the principal of the Grand Prairie School, which is on the west side of Kalamazoo, if you know it. And my secretary said, um, we've got a cottage on Gravel Lake, and there are several cottages for sale out there. So why don't we take you out there and take a look around? So one night when it was absolutely pouring down rain, she and her husband and Harry and I went out to Gravel Lake and we looked at several cottages. One of them was where the store is, you know, on that beach. That's Streeter, isn't it? No. no. I think that's Willow Beach. Willow Beach. Yeah. Willow Beach. Yeah. I think there was a store on Streeter Beach, too. Yeah. A yeah. long time ago, yeah. right. right. Kind of back in the woods. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But anyway, uh, we went out and we looked and we looked at several and we didn't really like them that much. But she said, there's one more that's just been marked down. And she said, why don't we go take a look at that? It was on Idleys. And do you know them? And did you know the McHenry's at all? Um, I don't think Bill so. Bill McHenry? No, I'm You sorry. know the Riddles at all? Um, R-I-E-D-E-L? That sounds familiar. Yeah. David, do you know, did you know David Riddle? Yeah, I, I don't recall. It's been a while. Yeah, Dave the, died. Okay. Dave died. But anyway, the Riddles were on no, Idleys Beach. And we went to look at that cottage, and it didn't look anything like it looks now. For one thing, it was cleaner because I had a lot of little kids running around in an all time. Right. But it was so clean. It was absolutely immaculate. You could have had a picnic on the floor. It was that cool. And it didn't have any shower. It didn't have any hot water. She heated it in a deep well cooker on an electric stove, and uh, it didn't have any dishes, but it was so clean. There was no lawn, but it was $14,500. Wow. You cannot believe it, can you? It's like the price of a car now. Yeah. yeah. Well, a used car. A used car, a used car yeah. yeah. And, uh, but we really liked it, and so we talked. I can't even remember the name of the guy anymore. But we bought it. First and only time in my whole life we've had a mortgage. We took a mortgage out on that cottage. Our payments were $108 a month. Wow. And we couldn't afford to pay it off. Wow. Because it was cheaper to pay the mortgage than it was to not let the money collect interest you know, or right. invest it or anything. Do you remember what year that was? Mm -hmm. It was the year my older son started in Michigan. Um, I can't remember. Okay. It was back about, um, like about um, 40 some years, I think. In the, in the 60s? Uh, yeah, yeah. The early 60s, okay. I think it was. And so we, we said we would buy it, and then we wanted to have a certain lawyer do the investigating of the, the papers and everything, and he was in Japan. So we waited until he got back from Japan, and the day we went into Papa to sign the papers, it was cold. Hmm. And 
reigning and wretched, and hairy and whoever or Leith was his name, okay. L E A T H, and uh, they had to go and take the dog in and uh, all that kind of stuff, which should have been done a long time before, so we bought it. And uh, then uh, before we moved in or used it at all, we had the shower closed in and piped it for hot water and a few little amenities like that. But uh, the kids were thrilled. It is, it, it's still a beautiful, beautiful lake. It is. Yeah. Uh, and you have your grandchildren there now? Oh, yeah, and now everybody's there. Uh, not right today, but I mean, my grandkids come out. In fact, my Richard's first son, uh, yeah, elder son, was out there with his twins and his wife and kid this past week. Mm. He finally took a vacation. He hasn't had one for, he's a landscaper, you know, that kind of stuff. And this is when you work hard in the summertime. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. But anyway, they've been out there. And then I have, um, my daughter has three children, and Jim has two, plus some steps, step kids. And they all use it. And it's a mess most of the time, because <laughs> when you have a bunch of little kids around. Well, I, I think most of the cottages, you know, have family up, and... You know, you you know, and you have a lot of people going in and out, and you, yeah. you can't keep it, you know, no, clean. Well, you can't. No, and it's fun. We put the big room on primarily, so we'd have sleeping room for as many as we wanted, you know. And then you put mattresses down and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Um, what's the biggest change you've seen in the lake over the last forty years? Over the last forty years? Well, or you know, just the biggest change that okay. you can think of. Well, you know what it is. There's less traffic on the lake. When we bought the cottage, it was constant boats up and down. How long have you been on it? I, I've been here my whole life. Well, haven't you noticed that? Well, I noticed we're up on a lot of weekends, and I noticed that, especially on Sunday, it seems pretty busy to me. Does it? Yeah, but you don't. You think it was busier years ago? Oh, much busier, hmm. much busier. Yeah, I'm surprised that you think that it... Yeah, for some reason, uh, at least on some of the busy weekends. What about um, the development of the lake? You know, the new cottages, uh, oh, things when, like that? When the economy improved, people began upgrading their property. And I don't know whether it appears that way to you, but I think that... It's one of the nicest lakes as far as the upkeep of property yeah. that I know of. I mean, it's not a Gull Lake. It never will be Gull Lake because those are grander places. But there are very few down, um, run down places on that entire lake. I agree. Yeah. Um, can you tell us about your, your, um, your time with the Gravel Lake Association, how you got involved in that? Yeah, I can. Uh, do you remember Donna Strong? Um, no, I don't think I do. They were there forever. Do you remember Cliff Becker? I'm sorry. Because the Beckers were uh, at the lake a long time. That was my secretary, she and her husband. And um, let me see, who else? Donna Strong was the president of the association at the time that uh, we bought the property and I'm the kind of person I've got to get involved and stuff if you don't get involved you don't have anything to say and you don't don't know anything mm -hmm. so I, I I told Cliff and Don Strong I'd like to do something well then of course you become a secretary that's <laughs> always the the one that you get and I was the secretary for years and years and years. And then I became the secretary and the treasurer. And then I became the secretary and the treasurer and the Gravel Lake editor, Gravel Laker mm -hmm. editor. And I did that for many years. And at the time that we started it, it was just a little sheet that you typed up and then copied it off, you know. And then it began to improve. Do you know John Darren? 
Yes, they are yeah. glad they're in. Incidentally, is he still out there? I have not run into him lately. Yeah, he's he's still there, and uh, Paul's family knows him very well. Oh, do you? Yes. Yeah. He is one cool guy. Yes, he is. I've always been really <laughs> fond of John Darren. But he's not on the board anymore, so far as I know. Yeah, I'm not aware of that. No, yeah. I, I think, uh, yeah, I know he put a lot of years in. Yes, and, he did. And I think he just needed a break, and uh, I think he left maybe about three years ago. But um, I, we still see him often. We walk around the lake a lot. But when he was there when you were also involved. Oh, in, yeah. yeah. John, I love John. He was just one cool guy. He was a drug counselor at that time. Mm -hmm. You know, drug therapist, I guess, or counselor. And... Uh, I was interested in that because I was always interested in young people because I was in education. And uh, John bought the Becker's house, cottage, so we had that tie. Okay. And uh, there was a guy named Frenchie. Do you remember, know Frenchie? No. Best dancer I've ever seen on earth. He was fabulous. <laughs> and. Uh, then there were people that lived next door to Beckers, and I can't remember their name anymore. And then there was a, a house right next to the Beckers on the other side that was owned by people who worked for the oil companies in Arabia. Mm. They kept that cottage and used it for just a couple of weeks every summer. Wow. Yeah, they'd come back and spend time there. And I don't know who owns it now or anything like that. But uh, that was... Oh, and then you know Dennis Gorbaz? That sounds familiar. Yeah, you know the name. He he had a marina for a while hmm. on Gravel Lake. And I guess by, by profession he was a butcher. But uh, his parents owned property on Gravel Lake also. Okay. And they rented cottages and things like that. And his mom was active in the association to a degree also. But that's how I got started. I was nose trouble. I just had to know what was going on, you know. And uh, I was I was in it until I told you when they had that great big row at that meeting over the sewer. And everybody who worked on that worked so hard and put in so much time. And were you at that meeting? You know, we uh, weren't coming up a lot during that time, um, but I remember signing the petitions, you know, in favor of the sewers, and I talked to Mr. Burke about it, and we talked to all our neighbors about it, but we weren't able to get, you know, uh, in for the meetings, the public meetings, that I, as I understand it, the, uh, you know, the proposition was shot down, and but but leading up to that point, you were involved in all the work oh, of getting yeah. all oh, the... Oh, yes, you get petitions signed, and then you have something else to do. And we went to all the township board meetings. In fact, I just had some business, a uh, little business to do with Shoemaker the other day, and he and I were talking about that. He's a lawyer for the township board. Mm -hmm. And uh, he remembered that we used to come there and speak our piece and ask questions and watch what was going on and so forth. Um, but it, I've, done, I've been at a lot of public meetings, but I've never been at and involved in one that was as ugly as that one was. It was just purely awful. And you can delete that from the tape if you want to. I don't think so. I think that's real important yeah. for people to know. Yeah. Um, any uh, particulars you can tell us other than the general statement that it was ugly? Um, a lot of it was personal. Mm. And it seemed to be, at least it appeared to me, to be directed toward Earth Burke. I mean, it wasn't directed at me because I was just a secretary, you know, and you aren't the lead person, the point person, and things like that. But uh, that's the way it appeared to me. Mm -hmm. And it was, it always seemed to me as 
so it was the result of a whispering campaign. You know, you know what a whispering campaign is, mm -hmm. where people go around and try to say bad things about them. Say bad things, yeah. and well, if you watch Rudy Giuliani's speech the other night, mm -hmm. <laughs> Rudy Giuliani snide. Right. You know, no, it was not nice, and. Uh, and then, of course, it was shot down. The sewer was it, it. The whole thing died. Right. And for a while, we almost didn't have an association. And then Craig Eastman took over. And bless his heart, he has done a beautiful job. Yes, he has. He's very skillful with the meeting. He knows how to keep it cool. <laughs> and he knows how to keep them on task. No, he's very good. I hope he stays with it a long time. I do too. Yeah. Were there were there any other big issues while you were the um, in in the association years ago that came up? No, the the sewer was always there, mm -hmm. and we were always working toward it. No, mm -hmm. that was the big. That's the one I remember. Right. Yeah, and uh, I suppose there were little ones. And we would go to township board. You know, we always kept an eye on the township board. I don't think we needed to, mm. but uh, I remember there was one guy on the township board that always called John Darren in conversation about him, that bearded hippie. <laughs> <laughs> I guess he had a beard back then, huh? Yeah, <laughs> yeah he did. Yeah. And, well, John dressed to roll. I mean, if you're going to be a drug counselor. Right. You're going to look like your clientele, yeah, aren't you? That's true. And I think he, I think it was delivered. Then he bought that uh, counseling business uh, in Pop One. I don't know whether he still has that or not, or maybe he's retired. I don't know. I think he does some work with a community college. Yes, now. he does. Yeah. Oh, yeah. does he? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, yeah, and uh, he, he's a great guy. You oh, know, John's I like one. him a lot. He's way at the top of my favorite people. Yeah. I really like him. Um, what can you tell us about the towns uh, around Gravel Lake back in the 60s, like Lawton and Decatur? Okay. <clears throat> They've improved themselves a very great deal from the standpoint of appearance, basically. I mean, they police themselves up. And I think just like the lake is money became easier to come by. Mm -hmm. People earned more, they had more free money to spend. And stuff. Like the Big T. The Big T was a lot littler than the Big T is now. Right. And I remember, um, not the Big T, Decoy Duck. Do you ever go to Decoy Duck? I yeah. love the Decoy Duck. Right. And way back when we were upgrading the cottage at first, we had them um, the ceilings were wallboard, you know, drywall, mm -hmm. but the tape had cracked, and so we were trying to figure out a way to make them look good and cover them without tearing everything apart. So we built beams over them, and uh, we were working on that. I was on vacation, and we worked one, the week of my spring vacation and worked until real late on Friday night, the last night of vacation, finally got it done, and we went into Lawton to have something to eat, and Decoy Duck was open. But it wasn't even Decoy Duck, mm. but it was this little nothing, just, you know, just a little hamburger place. Right. But uh, Decoy Duck bought it, and they made a very nice thing of it. I well, like it. Both restaurants are nice. Yes, you know, they are. And they, they have improved a lot. And have you ever gone to the breakfast bar? Uh, I haven't, but my folks have been there quite yeah. often, yeah. yeah. They like that, too. Yes, they like that I like lot. that, too. Yeah. Yeah. And my little great granddaughter likes it there mm. at the, at the uh, decoy duck. You know, as you enter, standing right by the doorway, there's that big tall bear. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, she's a little past a year and a half, and she loves that bear. Oh. Uh. And I never was sure it was real, but somebody told me it was really a bear. It looks real enough. It's probably yeah. a stuffed bear. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it does. But I never could, I didn't know whether it really was or not. But 
anyway, that's cool. And then they used to have more ducks around before they remodeled it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 There's a little duck hall that you could yes. squawk on the yes. ceiling there. No. That was cool. Uh, any memories of Decatur or Marcellus? Yes. And Decatur, there was a little, a little um, donut shop or something like that. We used to go there and, and have coffee and donuts, my husband and I. And there was a grocery store there, and there still is. Mm -hmm. It's a nice grocery store. And there were a couple of bars, I think, if I'm remembering correctly. Mm -hmm. But, oh, and there was an antique shop. Mm -hmm. And as you can see, if you look around here, I'm an antiquer. And uh, so I, I enjoyed that. It was a good antique shop. But it, it um, doesn't have the character. It didn't, to me, the character that uh, Lawton had. Mm -hmm. And then Marcellus was another one. I used to go there and do my laundry. And uh, there was a grocery store there and a meat market and stuff like that. It hasn't changed that much. Yeah. I, I probably went to the same laundromat you went to. On, and oh. I'm, I'm 40 there. Yeah. Right before you turn into town. Yeah, yeah, we did our laundry there. And uh, what else do I remember about that? Very little. Actually, there's not an awful lot that sticks in my how about, mind. How about um, like lake activities? Fishing? Were oh. you a fisherman? Oh, yeah. Fisherwoman? Yeah. yeah. And my son, the one that you just met here, um, had had a terrible skiing accident that prior winter and uh, fishing was something that he could do as he was recovering mm. and I can remember all we had was that little rowboat, you know, the, the fishing rowboat mm. and uh, he'd be out in the middle of the lake fishing and I'd be standing on the shore yelling to him to come to dinner or whatever and he loved that, he really liked it. And there were a lot of people who fished. There were the McHenrys up on the hill, Bill McHenry and his wife, who also had had an antique shop at one time. And there were the Burnses down farther on the beach. And we used to play euchre with them. And uh, way down at the end were the Samalziks. Does that name ring a bell? A little bit, yeah. You know, uh, when I when I was a kid, we barely got off of Sandy Beach, so yeah. Well, it was big. Yeah, and uh, so I don't know a lot of the families yeah. from the other areas, but I, I enjoy hearing about them. So yeah, continue on with your neighbors. That's yeah. Well, there were those. Then there were some people that came from the steel the steel town in down by Chicago. What's mm -hmm. the name of it? Uh, Gary, Indiana. Gary, Indiana. They came from Gary. He or somehow or other in the steel mills, and they had the cottage next to us. Mm -hmm. And they came out real late every Saturday night, I can remember. They had a daughter. Oh, did mild flirting with, with Jim through the summer, you know, they were about the same age. Mm -hmm. And uh, she was, the daughter was the apple of her dad's eye, so he kept a very close eye. <laughs> on all of the activity. And they, they finally sold out and Maniacs, who had bought the cottage, bought the cottage when uh, the Fedorchecks wanted to sell it, um, had a son who died in the military. Mm. And it wasn't a battle-induced uh, death, it was an illness-induced death. But I guess that the military still pays for any soldier who dies, mm -hmm. and they used that payment to buy the cottage that Fedor checks were selling, and so they lived, had lived next door to us for years and years, and uh, they're fun. John was a builder, a carpenter, and I remember one time he came from Chicago. They lived in Chicago also. A lot of people on our beach are Chicago mm -hmm. people. And uh, he came with a whole bunch of lumber on his car. <laughs> and 
I saw him the next morning and he said, yeah, he said, uh, whatever I build with these boards is going to be really good because these are holy boards. Hmm. He said they came from a church. <laughs> he tore down a church. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what he built with them, but he's got a cute sense of humor. He was fun. Yeah. And uh, oh, the, there were Sergasons on the beach. Do you remember the Sergasons? No. Is that name? No, I'm that, sorry. And Emil, Emil built himself a little private sanctuary across the road from his house, and he had a couch in there and a TV and stuff. And he could go and watch all the stuff. Apparently, his wife didn't like to watch. <laughs> and uh, it was it was a nice little haven. Yeah. Well, let me see who else. Oh, the McHenrys. Hmm. The McHenrys built a number of the cottages that are on Idlees Beach. Okay. Bill McHenry. And uh, do you ever go down Red Arrow Highway? Uh, yeah. Well, you know that stone cottage or stone inn. It's it's a restaurant. But it's okay. built of stones. Yeah, I think we were there once. Um, yeah, it's it's right, it, on Arrow, yeah, right on Red Arrow. Yeah, right on Red Arrow. Yeah. Well, they had an antique shop in there at mm. one time, a long time ago. And then they moved out to Gravel Lake. Yeah, I know on, uh, on that side of the lake, is that where Strawberry Lake is? Yeah, is Strawberry Lake is not far from Idlees. Okay. Yeah, because... Uh, and. It is, see, we own, you know, that triangular piece? Mm -hmm. Well, we own that. Okay. And we own the one on the other side of that road over there. And then we own our lake one. And Strawberry Lake is kind of tucked in behind Idlees South, the South Beach mm -hmm. of Idlees. Yeah. I know it's, it's, it's usually overgrown when we walk yeah. by there. But, um, and I know it feeds into Gravel Lake, where yes, that big does. pipe is, but, yeah. um, you know, we can never see if there's any wildlife in there or, you know, anything going on in there because it's so isolated yeah. back there. And I don't know much about it except that the kids talk about it, you know, because yeah. they used to go back there with Dennis Riddle. And uh, I don't know if you can fish in it. I yeah. Would you like to have a chair to sit down? Oh, I'm fine. No, yeah, are you sure? Yes. Yeah. And, and how are we doing on time now? Um, we have 27 minutes so far, so 33 minutes left. Okay. Say. We have another half an hour to talk. Oh, <laughs> oh well, that's, that's a long time. Uh, but you know, and also I know that there's um, another little pond a little closer to the overflow there that... Um, I don't know, it's just a little pond back there, and it oh, looks yeah. really, really pretty. Yeah, I know uh, about that. And I, I just, I know when we walk by, there's lots of frogs jumping in, and, you know, it seems like, a, you know, the first time we walked by, I was like, oh, this is really unusual and, and pretty. Uh, and then the overflow is there, and I know that, yeah. you know, that's always kind of regulated the, the, the yeah, height of the it, lake. Yeah, it, it does. It regulates the level of the lake. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. But that is... The pond, I think, is just for water table, hmm. you know. But the people who really made that pretty were the Trebers. That's T-R-E-B-E-R, Traber. Okay. They bought on the beach, and the hardest working couple I have ever seen in all my life. Now, was her name Doris? Doris, yes. Okay, I, I met her. Yes. Yeah. And he walled up all that did all of that cement work stone work around that little lake yeah and i think they pulled a little a wagon an old wagon in there and i think there would have been planted flowers in it right i think they did like but since they've been gone it's now it's overgrown and everything I, yeah well they they moved yeah and i don't know who owns it even um you know i met doris years ago and she had some grandchildren from russia uh, <laughs> Her, uh, her daughter or her son adopted them, and when our kids were really little, we went over there and played with them, or we let our kids play with their grandchildren. And so we got pretty friendly with them, and then a few years later they sold it, and, yes. you know, we met the new people briefly, but... Yeah, and I don't never, even know who they are. Yeah, I, I yeah. don't know They did well. beautiful work on the cottage, though. They did. The Travers really, 
Yes, I used to uh, do the beach work, you know, up and down. Mm -hmm. And I'd always have a glass of wine over there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she was a very friendly woman. Yeah, yeah she, she really was. was yeah. And hardworking, yeah. hardworking, they both were. Yeah. But I can always remember seeing him building up that wall. He, you know how cement people do, they mm -hmm. lay a stone down and then they put some concrete on it and then they tab it down in and yeah. everything. And he was always working on that wall. And she told me one time that she never had to have a repairman because her husband couldn't do anything. <laughs> he could fix anything. Well, that's the one thing I noticed that um, the cottages, you know, I mean, it's, it is constant work and upkeep. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and as, as we walk around the lake, we always see people working on their yeah. place. Yeah. You know? yeah. And like you said earlier, um, the, everybody really keeps their place up well. They do. You know, as we walk around, we very rarely see a, a place that's in disrepair for a long time. And Usually. if it is, it's because somebody can't do it right. anymore. If I didn't have sons, I wouldn't be able to keep the cottage up anymore. And then, of course, you know what happened on our beach this spring. We got the full brunt of that storm that came across the lake. Mm. The Maniacs to the south of us, and then Jacks to the south of them, and Sullivans to the south of them. All the trees in there, most of the trees, that's an exaggeration, most of the trees, in their lakeside yard were blown right down. Mm. And they had to take them out, of course. And... Uh, they have reseeded their lawns. Our yard was hit differently. The part of one of our trees blew into Wotanic's living room. And <laughs> for a while after that, whenever the wind blew, Judy would crawl under a table. Because it's, she was right at the window when okay. this thing came sailing through the window. Mm -hmm. And it just scared the wits out of her as well at night, you know, see a tree flying at you. But we had to take out several of our trees. And uh, there was one in the backyard that split. We had to take that out. And then on the triangle, uh, there were several trees, and some of those are, are still uh, there. And I don't know when we'll get those out. I've shot my wad on trees for this year. I can't, you know. It costs money to have oh, trees yeah. taken out, lots of money, and uh, so I'm hoping that it'll rain a lot and wash the dirt off the roots, and it'll be a little easier to take care of them. But it, it looks awful in there right now. Uh, we, we we noticed that the one that's um, was, was cleared off the road a few weeks ago, the one that was kind of blocking that little road that went by there. Yeah. Was, because we do walk around the lake a lot, and we we met your neighbor um, who had the the. The roof damage. You know, he had a big blue tarp over the hole in his roof. Oh, yeah, I think. I think we met him at the meeting uh, a couple weeks well, ago. I think that's right. I think didn't um, Botanics get? It might have been him. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I forget his name. But was, were there any other storms that you recall in the past? Those are the worst that that's, I can yeah. remember. Yeah. And do you go up there in the winter time at all? No. 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 Okay. I couldn't stand it in the winter. Yeah, it, we don't either. No, it's yeah. it's very desolate. Yeah. We drive but when my husband was living, we used to drive down there to check on things. And uh, everything was always okay. But I can remember between us and Maniacs, it's just a perfect wind tunnel. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the drifts would be right up under the eaves of the cottage sometimes. So just that north wind kind of going yeah, across the lake and... sweeps across that ice. Yeah. And can you imagine being in a cottage at that time? But Maniacs lived there all year. Mm. They moved up from Chicago. and But they've done more to winterize their house than we have, you know. Uh, yeah, ours isn't winterized either. No. You know, we we did a lot of work on our house, but it's it's still just a three season cottage. Yeah, well, so is ours. Yeah, and I like to close it up about uh, early October. Yeah, because you know what you can get in October. 
And yeah, you never know. No, it, it could no. be snow or it could be beautiful. It that's could be, right. Yeah, that's right. That's true. But, but we do, and then we try to open it up about the beginning of May. Mm -hmm. That's when we usually do it. Yeah, Paul's family lives up there all year round. So. Oh, do they? <laughs> Yeah. Now, how did they manage? Did they let, have to put a lot of insulation in the walls? Well, we built our house from scratch, so oh, did, did <laughs> yeah. you tear one down. Yeah, so it's it's perfectly fine in the winter. Well, it's yeah, fully it would be. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you build it, there's one like that on our beach, and what is their name? They're related to Mediacs. but they built a. He started remodeling it, and he got so sick of it of having to tear something out and replace it, that he tore the whole thing <laughs> down and rebuilt it. Is that one that has three stories of glass frontage? Oh, yeah. Oh. I, I yeah. don't know what you mean, yeah. yeah but yeah. I can't think of his name. I thought he was related to Galassi. The, uh, the Could folks. be. Yeah. He's, and he's related to Beatty Heck also. Okay. Yeah, because I remember when they were putting that up, yeah. uh, he had Galassi's truck over there and everything. Now, and, he, I want, is, is he retired, I wonder? Uh, Glassy? No, no. The oh. guy that built the new house. I don't know. Yeah. You know, when, when they were tearing the old one down, I remember um, going by there. They had a big fire in front. And they were burning a lot of the stuff, and we just said hi. And uh, um, but I've seen them over the years. Yeah, yeah. They uh, work hard. They are. Vic something or other. I think long enough. I'll ever call yeah. it. But they're next to him. There's a couple. I think it's right next door, but close to them in any event. Who? Um, are of European extraction, mm -hmm. and it's always been interesting to me. They take immaculate care of their place, but if he's out and he has to take a little piece, at least he used to take a piece of grass out from some place mm -hmm. because it's overgrown or something, he will find a place on his yard that needs a little patch of grass, mm. And he will dig out the space and mm. plant that little piece of grass there. Wow. And Europeans do that. And I had never seen it done except, you know, in movies and stuff like that. Uh, it's new to me. Yeah. yeah. I, I think their name is the Gondex. Gondex. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, I think yeah. Yeah, we've, we've gone by their place. Yeah. Um, what's your favorite thing about Grandma Lake? My favorite thing, I don't know, I think it's a tranquility. The boats can be flying, but it's still tranquil. And you look out across the water, it's peaceful. It is peaceful. It is beautiful. It's the prettiest lake I know. And of course, I mean, I'm prejudiced, I'm aware of that also. But it's, uh, did you get and buy any of those photos of the lake when they were selling those aerial photos? My neighbor got one, I didn't yeah. get one. But I wish I, if they do it again, I'd like to get one, yeah. You know, you, Tom, is your dad still on the board? Do you know no, he, he's, he's, he's not, him and John no. Darren left about the same time. That's okay. what I thought, yeah. yeah. Well, that might talk talk to um, um, Craig. Mm -hmm. That might be a good project. Yeah, like a fundraiser maybe. Yeah. Yeah, I think so too. Aerial photos. Because it is almost perfectly round. Yeah. It is beautiful. There's only one lake that I know of that's round like that. It's up in Illinois someplace. Mm. But no, I love that. And I like the people. Mm -hmm. People at the lake are very nice. Have you seen Mediac's new thing, gazebo or whatever, that they have in their lakeside? I, I think we, you know, we usually walk around, along the roadside, so oh, we, don't, do. we don't see a lot of the front, um, except like in the early spring and, and late fall when people pull their piers in, then you can kind of get around the front yeah. of the lake easier. Yeah. Um, so, but I'll notice it next time I go by. Yeah, and, yeah. it is lovely. And uh, there, uh, Irene, uh, their wife is not well, their mother, mm. and uh, I think they put it up for her because it's just you can go in there, you know, and it's shady and there aren't any bugs that can get at you or anything like that. Mm. Uh, <coughs> they've done that. Now I'd 
lost my train of thought. Oh, you well. I think you're talking about how nice the people are, in addition to the lake being beautiful. But yeah, it like, is. And I, I think the people up there, um, you know, just make it for me and our family and the new people that our our kids are meeting that we're meeting. Yeah. It's, and some it's, of them marry each other, you know. Yeah. Uh, Botanic's son married the daughter of the people at the end of our beach. Oh. Yeah. Wow. Um, None of my family did. They imported them, uh, <laughs> but uh, uh, well, I'll, we'll see how our kids do. They're 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 a few years away from marrying age. How but, many kids do you have? Uh, well, my son Spencer is Paul age. He's twenty, and my daughter is uh, sixteen. So they're yeah. Well, they've got a while yet. Yeah. Well, now how old are you? Twenty. And where do you go to school? I'm at KVCC right now. It's a good community college. It is, yes. I'm enjoying that. Yeah, Jim went there. Oh, really? Yeah, he did. And the only thing, when he transferred to Grand Valley, there was only one credit he wouldn't transfer. And that was, I think, a... Um, uh, wasn't kind of physics, because of the teacher wasn't very good, he said. And he was embarrassed to transfer a credit when he didn't know anything. And so he, he didn't transfer that credit. But in general, it's an excellent school. And I've known the president. I had their kids in school when I was principal of Arcadia. They had one son, and they were always very active in the schools. And then he uh, became, um, what do they call it? It's not the college, it's in something in education anyway. He did Larry Schlack, and then Mrs. Schlack became the president of uh, Kalamazoo Valley, mm -hmm. and she runs a good one. Yeah. She's a good, it's a good school. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what do you, uh, where do you plan to go after you leave there? I'm not exactly sure yet. Um, it's hard to decide, isn't yeah, it? So. I'm I'm looking for film, so I might wind up in Chicago actually. <laughs> ah, you film is what you want to do. Yes, well, possibly. That's the that's the deciding factor on where I go. <laughs> and and uh, I mean, I don't understand that. What do you mean? What's the deciding factor? Oh well, I don't know if that's exactly the career I want yet. Oh yeah, well, <laughs> you never know that. Right. Well, and if it's if it's not then college can get kind of expensive yeah. for film and if I didn't end up wanting to do that then I don't that would be a lot of debt to have so most people wind up I have a granddaughter who um, in fact she's the one probably Kristen you know yes yeah, Kristen Arnett yeah, yeah Arnett yeah and uh, she had to borrow money or she did borrow money she said her parents ought to keep their money Mm. And uh, so she borrowed, and uh, it takes a while to pay that off. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. it does. But she went to get to uh, West Virginia, mm. and got her degree there, and likes it. Good. She likes what she does. And she's back in this area now, right? I, she's in Lansing. Okay, yeah, I get Lansing. I get emails from her, and I know uh, yeah, I yeah. think it's from a lawyer. Um, yeah, she is uh, a lawyer. Okay. Yeah. yeah. In fact, I think I'm going to transfer some of my stuff over to her. Mm -hmm. It's easier than running around, mm -hmm. and maybe cheaper. And keep it in the family a little yeah, bit. Yeah, that's right. It's, it, it is really easier. Well, you know, I remember uh, our Mayor Daly, the old Mayor Daly, years ago, he said, if you can't, you know, help your family out, who can you help? Yeah, and he did help his. <laughs> he did a lot. <laughs> so. Do you know, my grandma lived in Chicago. During the Al Capone days. Oh, okay. And uh, I had a cousin who was a little older than me, not many years, but a few years older, old enough so that he thought he was cool, you know, and he dressed fit to kill. And he was always running around with a briefcase. Mm. And as I got older and got to thinking of, I never talked about what he did. Mm. And I got thinking about him and what he did, and that he never talked about it. So I said to him one day, Merlin, I'm going to ask you something. And you may not want to answer, but I'd like to know, 
Were you mixed up with the mob in any way when you lived in Chicago? And he said, well, yes, I was. He was a runner. Hmm. And me, whatever was in that briefcase. And I said, well, weren't you scared? And he said, well, I never looked either to the right or the left. I did what I had to do, and I left. But that was those were rough days in Chicago. They, they were. Yeah. yeah. Oh, there was another one. There was Al Capone. And then there was another one that was not quite as well known as Al Capone, but mm. also not a very sweet man. But Bugs Moran? Say it again. Bugs Moran? Yeah. And then there was one, another one. Mm. Well, I, I know there was the Untouchable Gang, Elliot Ness. Um, yeah. yeah, that name is familiar to um, me. But you know, I if you go think. out um, East, East Main Street, I think it is, on the north side of the street, out to, of town a ways, there's a beautiful colonial house. And rumor always had it that the Chicago Gang owned that house. Hmm. And... Uh, that they had all kinds of underground virus and all kinds of stuff like that. I don't know if it's true or not. Well, you know, maybe on the way up to Canada to get some uh, alcohol during the yeah. Prohibition. You know, this would have been a way, you know, going up that way. That's right. That would have made sense, yeah, wouldn't it? Would have been. Yeah, this would have been, you know, a couple hours north of Chicago yeah. on the way yeah. up to Canada. So well, that's, anyway, that's not out of the question. Yeah. What? Passed it quietly. Okay, we'll, we'll erase that part. <laughs> oh, yes, you may delete that. <laughs> All right. Uh, any, anything else you wanted to say about Gravel Lake? Oh, I think the thing I want to say about it, basically, I love it. I think sometimes, you know, it's harder for me to get out there now. I'm scared to be out there when I'm all by myself, mm -hmm. which is silly in a way, but they do murder old ladies, you know. And uh, so, but I walk in there and it's just peace. It really is. And the kids have it. I have it in trust for my children. And I don't know any of them that don't like it, my grandkids. And now I have five great grandchildren. Mm. And I hope they learn to like it as much. 